Hey everybody, it's Muscle Car Campy, and today we have one of the kings from Detroit's golden era. It's a 1965 GTO, it's got three deuces, it's got a four speed, and it's got a 389. You heard her tacking up before, pretty soon you're going to hear her whine, but before you do, don't forget, hit that subscribe button and make sure you ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live. When John DeLorean, Russ G, and Bill Collins conjured up the GTO, it ran contrary to company edicts and to some degree common sense. The Pontiac's image was based on performance and racing, and with GM recommitting itself to its corporate-wide racing ban, these three men realized the division would need a high-performance image machine to keep customers flocking to showrooms. The 64 GTO's success was based on more than just straight-line performance. It had two fake hood scoops, bucket seats, and a large displacement mill of standard equipment. Unlike previous muscle cars, like the Chevy 409 and the Ford Galaxy with the 427, the GTO was substantially lighter, so it could run mid-14s with ease. That was plenty fast for 64 and attracted 32,450 buyers, far more than GM management expected. Then came 1965, and the GTO got even better. The body was revamped, and with hidden taillights out back and stacked headlights up front, plus a sexy new air scoop on the hood, it was a design for the ages. With a dealer installed kit, that hood could be made functional. Remarkably, GTO production more than doubled, with 75,352 peeling out from the showrooms. Except for a little bit of internal competition from Buick and Olds, the GTO really had no competition in the midsize muscle car segment. It was an entity unto itself. Today's example belongs to Jeans Valensky, and originally it was equipped with a four barrel. When it was restored and he bought it, it had tri-power on it. The uh, previous owner also added uh, power front disc brakes with a dual pot master cylinder for extra safety. The only real modification besides the tri-power is later model high flow exhaust manifolds. It's so it. simplistic under here. There is just, just the basics. I mean, you look at the accessory drive. It's an alternator, a water pump, fan, power steering pump. There's no air injection. There's no smog equipment. This was Detroit's last, really its last gasp at unfettered horsepower without any government intervention. So in 1964, I was turning 17. I made a deal with my dad that he'd match the amount of money that I could make in a part-time job to buy a car. Well, what was happening at that time? The GTOs just came out, you know, and through the work, I was able to get enough money, but just slightly short of the value of the car. I needed an extra $500. Well, my dad wouldn't give it to me, unfortunately. So I ended up with a 1964 Catalina. Then it took me almost 45 years to find this GTO because I swore I was going to get one at some time. And I found it, and guess what? Here it is, my 1965 GTO. Smell the tires. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gee, thanks for taking us out in your car today really love it the inside of this car is a little different than stock right you said you had painted the dash red it was supposed to be uh black black that's correct but i think it looks way better in red yeah uh, i love the red color i mean it's amazing it, you know with the white parchment it just sets it off you know tremendously and what's really fun for me you know steel a pillars door panels on top are steel the instrument panel didn't have the optional padded dash i right. mean it's just um it's everything ralph nader hated and i love it yeah <laughs> it's got the rally dash in it because it has the tachometer built directly into it you know versus being down here mm -hmm. you know as an, an accessory the whole tack on the console was a little bit odd to me i mean you really had to take your eyes completely off the road or, or the strip, most likely, where you're trying to really bang a gear at about 5,500 RPM. Yeah, unfortunately, it costs a little additional 
you know, money back in the day to get the dash, you know, tachometer built in. You know, so it was easier to just do an aftermarket, you know, gauge. Yeah. And I love the wood grain on the instrument panel, uh, the factory hearse shifter. I mean, it's no wonder they sold 75000 And to put that in perspective, you know, I don't think if you added up all the Max Wedge Mopars and 427 and 406 Fords and 409 Chevys, you wouldn't probably get to 7,500 cars, let alone <laughs> 75,000. I think looking back on it now, we kind of take for granted that, oh, the GTO was popular. Well, yeah, but you know what? 75,000 out of big, virtually nowhere. No one expected the car to be that successful. And that surely didn't hurt any of the Tempest or Le Mans sales that were going on at the time either. That's when GM really had their game going on. You had guys like DeLorean, Pete Estes running Pontiac, and it was just such a great era for GM. Yeah, it was an exciting time, that's for sure. You know, bringing the GTO out just made a huge change to the auto market. Well, you know, you were 17 in 64. Correct. Um, and I know money was tight, and but you were able to buy a full-size Pontiac, a Catalina, for $2,700. Did that have any kind of a uh, an engine in it, a good engine? or was Actually, it? it had the exact same engine that this had in it, you know, except it had a four barrel on it. Uh -huh. So it was pushing 335 horsepower, you know, versus this one pushing 360 horsepower. Right. And what's really cool is, you know, Pontiac had upgraded the 389 for 1965 in the GTO. You had a better intake manifold, you had more airflow through the heads, you had a little more radical camshaft in it. So, you know, that was a big jump up to 360 horsepower. It really made their presence felt. Yep, that additional horsepower could really smoke the rear tires. What, what is your favorite part of this car? Just that you finally got the car you wanted when you were a teenager or is there one other part that just stands out on it? I think the most important thing to me on this car is just having it and driving it. You know, uh, the fact that it has, you know, all the features that make it the GTO is just like extra icing on the cake. It's such a great car. I love sitting in here. I love the sculpted, the beautiful rounded off hood with the sculpted fenders. And I'm just a sucker for stacked head, headlights. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Pontiac started in 63 with that. I mean, they were just so good. I mean, really, you know, the industry, you know, changed. They really were a styling leader, Pontiac. You had Ford followed suit 65 with the stacks. You know, it was quite, quite amazing. Yeah, the, the look of the 65 is what got me excited about the car. I mean, in 64, it was brand new and original. But 65, it just looks so good. Yes. And that's what really, you know, turned me on to this car. And that's why I just love driving it. You got some power. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, I tell you what, it does make you feel, you know, like you want to go back in time and just enjoy it. Uh, that was such a fun era. These cars were so great, and that's why I really, really wanted to have this GTO. And when DeLorean did his thing and got this, you know, <clears throat> model started, uh, he really had a vision, and uh, it was just exciting. It was, you know, just a beautiful car, you know, and one that had a lot of speed. All right, everybody, Muscle Car Campy saying see you later. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live. See you soon.